there, Plow and Pantry people. For some reason, when I uploaded this video, there was absolutely no audio attached to it at all. It was apparently just not picked up. And I decided to voice over this video instead of remaking it again because I wouldn't be able to get around to refilming it for at least another week. And I thought someone might be able to use this information now during our kind of prolonged cold snap we're having. But making these um, suet blocks or flock blocks is a simple process. It doesn't take much time, like maybe 10 minutes at the most, and then a little bit of time in the fridge, maybe 30 minutes. And then you can have these out for your chickens, give them a little extra fat and protein for the cold weather, and a little bit of a boredom buster as well. And it's not complicated, so I thought a voiceover would still work in this scenario. I don't have a real recipe here with measurements. I add various types of ingredients and enough fat to keep it all together. And as I go through here, you'll understand um, a little bit long. Uh, I start by going over what I'm using in my suet cakes, which are also called flock blocks. Um, I have some scratch grains here that have some other items in it. There's bits of dried broccoli and stuff like that. I want to be better about making some of these types of blends myself with garden scraps this summer. You can use your regular feed. I used to use a whole feed that has sunflower and grains and stuff in it, but my chickens were wasting a lot, eating only their favorite bits. So I got the same feed, but it's mashed together into small pellets so that they actually eat it. I mention that only because if you use a whole parts type of feed, you can use that in here. I don't do that now because now that I use pellets, I don't like the way it mashes down into the mix when it gets wet. So I just skip it all together and use the scratch grains. And I use the scratch to make up the majority of the mix. And again, no measurements. I'm just making a batch that will fit the containers I have. I add sunflower seeds, um, hope they're Hopi black dye sunflower seeds that I grow in the summer for my chickens. They're still in the hole, but you can go either way. These add protein and healthy fat to keep the chickens warm and their winter feathers nice and thick and strong. And I just mix this stuff up with my hands. The next thing I just added there is a blend of like grubs and mealworms and dried grasshoppers, which also have a lot of protein in our retreat. You can really add a lot of things into here. Um, so long as they're dry. You can add chopped nuts. My chickens especially like peanuts. So you can add seeds, small amounts of oats. Just think for winter warmth, fat, protein, carbs. Don't go. Cr I don't go crazy with the carbs in the suet blocks because I give my chickens scraps of bread and rice and stuff left over from our meals in winter. Um, then I'm adding a blend I make in summertime with extra herbs I dry, rose petals, that kind of thing. I think I talked about this during the summer every bit counts challenge and I'll try to find that video and link it for you but there's oregano in there which is good for winter health there's thyme there's basil there's parsley the rose petals have vitamin c probably some other random bits of things if you don't you don't have to do herbs but they are great for chickens in the winter especially oregano so if you have some extra dry herbs on hand go ahead and throw some in there i get it all mixed in there and i throw in a bit of peanut butter about half a cup in this batch, again with the protein, fat, and carbs, but not too much with the peanut butter. It's pretty rich. I'm showing you, um, I started to mix it with a spoon, but I end up mixing it more with my hands later because peanut butter just works out better that way. Sorry if you hear my dog sniffing here. I'm showing you the containers I use for these. I use these because I like to use what's on hand and you can use empty tubs from things you buy, like sour cream containers, that kind of things. These are just extra prep containers that I use for freezing soup and other meals for single servings that I eat winter and some that I send home, um, I mean, to work with my husband, but mostly for me. Um, I'm use, I used a knife to punch holes in the sides of these so that I can put skewers through them. It's not a necessary step. I do it because I have a hanger for these that has a small bar that goes through the middle. You can put these in any form you want. Um, you can put them in a donut pan and tie a ribbon through the middle and hang them that way. You can use muffin tins or silicone molds. You can even put them in a cake pan and cut them apart into squares or rectangles. A lot of people put them in suet cages. I can link one of those below for you. You don't even really have to hang them. You could just lay them out, but they take the chickens longer to eat them and they're more fun if they're hanging. I was also pointing out a second ago that even though the containers are deep, I'm only using them for the shape because they're, that's what I have on hand. Um, so I'm making my blocks like an inch and a half thick. So I'm only using the bottom portion of them and I put my hole in the middle of that section. The last thing I add today is coconut oil. 
that I've heated a bit to make it liquid so it can um, I can mix it in easily. I've also used tallow in the past. I've used a mix of both of those. You just want a fat that's solid at room temperature or at least in the cold because that's what holds the mix together in the blocks. Another thing that I like about making these myself instead of buying them, besides controlling the actual ingredients of the treat part, is that the blocks you buy in the store tend to have um, junk fats and a lot more of them because that's cheaper for them to buy because a lot of the companies that make them for the store, um, are they're using byproducts from processing plants and it's their cheapest ingredient. So if you look at those, they will have way more fat than these do and way less treats. Um, I just can use, I use enough oil just to hold the mix together when it's solid. And I use my hands there and washed and dried them because it was just way easier to mix it. Um, once I have it mixed, I spoon it into my containers and because I have holes in mine, some of the oil you will see will sip out, seep out onto the counter, but I put them in a pan before I refrigerate them so they don't get all messy inside my fridge. Once I have the mix in the containers, I will stick the, um, the skewers through them. I kind of push them down just a little bit with the spoon, but I don't, I have enough oil. I don't need to do too much of that. I'm just trying to make sure they're all even there and getting my skewers put through the middle so that I have that hole for my hanging bar to go through. Again, you can skip that part if you are not using a hanging thing that goes through the middle of your treats. I have liked in the past using a donut pan, like a silicone one that makes it easy to pop out and just tying a ribbon through the hole and hanging it there. If you don't have holes in the middle of yours, you don't have to put them in a container for the refrigerator um, because you wouldn't have oil seeping out. I do, so that's why I do that. But once they're in the refrigerator, it does not take long for them to harden up. And as soon as they're hardened, they're ready to go out. Mine took less than 30 minutes in the refrigerator before that coconut oil was solid again. In my case, when I take them out, because I have skewers through them, I soften them just slightly in warm water. I go around the outside edge with a knife first to loosen them, but then I sit them in the pan with warm water just until they're loose enough to pull that skewer out. I'm not trying to melt the block back down again. Again, if you don't have a skewer in yours, you don't need to do this step at all. You can just loosen them with a knife and pop them out of your container. And then they are ready to go out to my chickens for them to enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though there were sound setbacks. And thanks for spending time in your day with me.